thanks everyone for visiting our webinar of our new uh, master program, Master of Computer Vision of uh, HSE University. And today we will speak about some employment opportunities with one, and we will speak with one of our uh, great partners of our program. So, uh, but before that, uh, let me briefly introduce our uh, program and the main um, uh, the main participants who will try to <laughs> to create and to develop this uh, program as uh, as good as possible. So first of all, it's our uh, Dean Natalia Sieva who uh, paid a great amount of time in uh, creating this um, program and uh, every documents, every presentation, everything. So. Uh, there are two academic supervisors. First of all, it's uh, Valery Kalyagin. He's Valery Kalyagin, who is a tenured professor and also head of International Laboratory of uh, Algorithms and Technologies for Network Analysis. And also me, Andrei Savchenko, who is a professor and, um, uh, in our HSE University and also the, uh, one, again, one of the supervisors of our master degree program. And also we have two uh, great guys who uh, who communicate with uh, the potential students, with um, uh, everyone, and who actually who made a, a lot of things uh, in organizing these webinars, exams, and so on and so forth. It, it's uh, his Igor Privalov, uh, who introduced myself today, and also Alin Laban, uh, who uh, tried to answer all, que all your questions uh, during our webinars and uh, in every uh, chats and telegrams and emails and so on and so forth. So uh, speaking about our university, National Research University Higher School of Economics, uh, it has uh, four campuses. Uh, the main uh, campus is located in Moscow, and there are also three other campuses in St. Petersburg and Perm, and uh, our campus in Nizhny Novgorod. So it was, it was the first, uh, the second campus after the Moscow uh, of our university. And uh, again, we actually, uh, we are not divided into different parts because every student of every campus has uh, practically the same opportunities for uh, for teaching, for working, uh, for communicating with uh, other uh, professors from other uh, campuses and so on and so forth. So it's a great distributed university, actually. So and uh, why, uh, let me briefly uh, to tell you why we decided to open this uh, Master of Computer Vision in uh, our campus in Nizhny Novgorod. So uh, first of all, our city, probably it's uh, not well known as um, Moscow or St. Petersburg uh, outside of Russia, but actually it's one of the uh, main uh, cities uh, in computer region uh, in Russia and actually in all of the world because uh, one of the most uh, widely used computer vision libraries, so-called OpenCV, Open Computer Region, uh, has been uh, developed uh, actually by uh, engineers in Nizhny Novgorod at Intel office and um, several uh, these in, several uh, of these uh, original developers support our program and uh, participate in some courses and uh, of our program. So uh, after that, we have uh, plenty of different uh, of professors of uh, of uh, full professors of uh, associate professors who are interested in computer vision who has some um, experience in uh, research. And uh, we have plenty of uh, students of our current offline progress. I mean, not only in our university, but in some other universities in Nizhny Novgorod. And we have a lot of uh, different international companies uh, in, our, uh, in our city, Nizhny Novgorod. And one of them is uh, uh, Huawei uh, Research and Development Center, who, which has been, I believe, uh, opened in Nizhny Novgorod uh, two or three years ago. So, and uh, uh, actually we have uh, very good communication with uh, Huawei Research um, Center in Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, some of uh, its engineers are our uh, former students and right now they also participate um, in, uh, and they also participate in uh, some, um, in uh, some courses and uh, they also uh, have some courses, I mean, in, uh, our current uh, Master of Computer Vision degree. And uh, I will uh, briefly introduce some of the schedule of these courses. 
And uh, right now, I would uh, also we have some research projects with uh, supported by Huawei and our HSC University, I believe, three or four projects right now. So it's rather a uh, good partner of our university, of our program. And I uh, am really glad to introduce our speakers from Huawei uh, company, Alexander Shanin and Evgenia Gorbachev, who will uh, speak uh, about uh, the research opportunities of computer vision in, uh, and, and, I don't know, and career opportunities on computer vision specialists at uh, Huawei company. So welcome. I believe Alexander will be the first one. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Now uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Uh -huh. We see it well. Thank you. Okay, it's okay. Okay. Now, uh, so I'll start. Uh, so, uh, as it was mentioned before, my name is Alexander Shane, and I'm deep learning engineer at Huawei Nizhny Novgorod Research Center. So today, I want to briefly introduce you to AI research in particular particular area of computer vision at Huawei Nizhny Novgorod Research Center. Our center is young, uh, and it was founded about two and a half years ago. Uh, but it has its own uh, successful history in different research and product uh, directions. Uh, now, uh, I want you to introduce our activity timeline in object detection and segmentation tasks. These two are basical for computer vision. So, at the beginning, our team uh, worked on clothing detection uh, problem. Uh, the first goal was to demonstrate a competitive result on, uh, on a corresponding challenge. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, uh, as, a result, uh, as a result, we developed uh, a so-called state-of-the-art level solution and prepared a paper. And it was uh, accepted uh, to ICCV 2019 conference, which took place in Seoul, South Korea, uh, where we presented it. Uh, you can see our two happy team members on the photo, and one of them is a, is a uh, future professor at the School of Economics, uh, Maxim Kazakov. So uh, a month later, we optimized uh, the solution to make it working on the phone in real time and recorded uh, this Christmas video. Uh, here you can see uh, our closing detection solution works in real time. Uh, it detects uh, different types of clothing uh, such as t-shirts uh, and other stuff. Uh, so uh, after uh, that research activities, we started to receive tasks from different product uh, teams from Huawei. And for each of them, we adapted almost the same uh, neural network architecture with uh, task-related changes. Uh, we delivered our core center net solution uh, to child health protection for smart TVs, uh, as you can see here. Uh, it turns off uh, the TV when uh, children children watch it uh, in eligible pose. Another products were yoga pose detection and fashion detection and uh, human pose estimations. Uh, uh, these uh, these applications uh, also work in real time as. And you can see it has pretty nice quality for this guy. Uh, but <laughs> uh, you can see a nice girl, but uh, because of her hair, uh, it has some troubles, but we uh, handle it. We try to handle it. But, it's, uh, but uh, this solution is in product. Uh, uh, 
and uh, during all this time, we worked on a base model improvement. And a year ago, we took the second place at a deep fashion competition. Uh, and we also had a presentation of medal winning solution at CVPR uh, 2020 conference. Uh, let's go to the next year. Uh, this year, we tried to solve a more difficult task, estimate hand pose in 3D from basic R RGB camera input. Uh, the demo shown on the slides uh, is, demonstrates mm -hmm. its possible use case. Keyboard without keyboard. You can make a text input when you have no keyboard at all. <laughs> Yeah. Our engineer <laughs> uh, tries to uh, input the word Huawei uh, without keyboard. So uh, in our research center, we are open to new ideas and personal projects. Uh, here uh, you can see one example of it. If we connect hand pose estimation and uh, gesture recognition, uh, with person segmentation, we can create an innovative project like this. So we inserted a slideshow into the Hello. slideshow. Here's a demo watch. slideshow called Live Gesture Control, created by Nizhny Novgorod Research Center team. In this presentation, we implemented very simple gesture recognition technique to draw on frames and to switch between slides. Here's an agenda of presentation. So can see here Our the main goals are and, uh, to create right the to complex tool for online interaction uh, with media slide. content yes. and to bring more personality to the process of slides creation. Our desired solution requires two core technologies to be developed and implemented. The first one is 3D hand pose estimation and gesture recognition for providing us the power of media content control. The second technology is background removal or person segmentation, which allow us to put the speaker. Sorry, we can't hear it because of the video. Uh, oh, okay. Could you repeat, uh, please? Hello. Here's uh, the. So, uh, uh, colleagues uh, said me that uh, you didn't hear me. Uh, I said uh, that uh, we used here gesture recognition for slide switching. As you can see, we use hand pose estimation for uh, to draw on frames. Uh, uh, we draw using OpenCV. And you can see that uh, uh, this application works in real time and requires no post processing. So you can use it uh, in uh, online solutions like Zoom meetings at all. Uh, and uh, I want to show you. We can slide. create a nice product in which multiple technologies could be implemented. Thank you for your attention. Created with love by Nizhny Novgorod Research Center team. Thank you. So uh, you create some, uh, you can create some kind of uh, this stuff. <laughs> and uh, so, um, in the end, I want to say that we're interested in people who love mathematics, linear algebra, uh, machine learning, and computer vision. Uh, for doing research, Python as require, is required as uh, C++ and Java. C++ and Java for product development. Uh, highly, highly appreciated experience of working with NumPy, PyTorch, or TensorFlow frameworks. Thank you. I'll stop sharing my screen. If you have questions, you can ask them. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Yeah, thanks.
And uh, uh, for everyone, if you have some questions, you can uh, write them to chat or to special uh, forum questions and answer. Our speakers will be glad to answer your questions uh, during our uh, current webinar. And we can uh, switch to uh, another participant, uh, to Evgenia. Yep. Yep. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, but my video camera is not working at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Uh -huh. I don't know what happened. Uh, sorry, I'm a newcomer at Huawei. Okay. I will send my um, email in the common chat. And if you, uh, dear colleagues and dear future colleagues of Huawei, have any questions, please write to me personally and I will ask everybody so if we are uh, if you want to know some secrets how to get the attention of a recruit <laughs> please pay attention now what i am saying first of all uh, when uh, you find a very interesting um, vacancy uh -huh, uh, and you want to get the job at any company, please uh, write one or two sentences uh, plus to your CV. And uh, if you inform the recruiter uh, with your mobile phone in uh, this short letter, it will be very, very good because it's not a secret, but uh, the recruiter and the company pays every time when he opens the contact. And if you send your <laughs> mobile telephone, you get more chances to uh, be focused on. Is it clear? Okay. And as for CV, please pay special attention to the key skills. Don't write, please, uh, such things like I'm a great team player or I'm a very communicative person. No, first of all, if you, are, uh, if you want to get the vacant place at computer vision, it's important what hard skills do you have. And please write down, for example, Python, C++, and uh, or Java, and JavaScript, JVUS, and so on, everything you know. And uh, it would be great if you will also inform the recruiter and the future team with the links of uh, your works, portfolio, I mean. It, it is always great. Usually it is on GitHub or maybe any other resources which are open and easy to go for recruit and for team who are looking for a new colleague. Mm -hmm. That's all, I suppose. The, do you have any questions according to this? Anybody has? It was one question. Uh huh. You are free to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I'll load it in six hours. What do you look for under projects? I mean, uh, I think it's more for Alexander or for me. What kind of answer do you need from recruiter or from the researcher? Hmm? I think I, you may answer from the recruiter point of view. Okay, it's not a problem. So here we are working at the research center and for us it's very important uh, for every uh, new participant of our team to be a researcher first of all. That's why you should be very well qualified and uh, like to learn to investigate and to research, first of all. And uh, projects, we mean projects on uh, concentrated on different spheres of our everyday life. If you have any idea for a project, Huawei is the best place to start it. You may come, introduce your project and get the team and become a team leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very important to have experience and background skills. Yes, also thanks for question for David. Yeah, but it's very important uh, what kind of uh, skills uh, 
do you have? And they told what kind of experience, what kind of portfolio do you have? And it's very important if you're concentrated on getting PhD, because again, I repeat, we are here, um, the research center, and we uh, want to have very well qualified people here. As for beginners, yes, we are open for them. We have in turn interns position and for example if you're a student right now you can uh, work half uh, half time a part-time job here for 20 hours per week continue to study and to work with Huawei and get practical things together with our engineers and uh, become uh, very experienced very soon if you want to know more about our vacancies, please go to Headhunter and uh, write to me, I will answer you, okay? Any other questions? Uh, but small research team and then I'm on the computer. Okay, uh, Ravi Dilip, yeah? Uh, you can write to me uh, and send your CV and I will give you a short consultancy if you want. Because, because uh, without CV, it's difficult to give you a good advice. Any other questions? Uh, Evgeny, may I ask yeah, yeah. you a question? Yeah, sure, uh, please. Uh -huh. I think this question will be interesting for a lot of our applicants and probably students. Mm -hmm. uh, just imagine that you are city, you are working like a HR specialist, yes, and uh, you face at one day two specialists. One have uh, so one have big experience in particular project, like for example, face recognition for. I don't know. No, I don't know actually the project. Like uh, he uh, has done examples in a particular sphere. This one specialist with his uh, CV, with his resume. And the second one is a new uh, specialist who just finished his education, who just uh, have a wide range of uh, master skills, but haven't got um, a lot of executed projects. So which uh, will be more interested for you, like for specialists who hire them? Oh, it, it depends on the team and uh, our uh, team uh, teams are very open, to, really. And if the person wants to work at Huawei very much and if he is passionate about it, we always will uh, give him a chance. For example, by giving him a test and if uh, the way he will be doing it uh, uh, will be uh, very important because we will see uh, how uh, how is he passionate about his future job, what uh, skills does he have, and um, it uh, can help him to get this job and to win this uh, competition. So it looks like the same chances, yes, and it and yeah. it depends how this person will present himself One. during and do the uh, present, task. present and how much does he wants and uh, because from time to time i meet um, this kind of uh, situation the person um, uh, sends the uh, cv yeah and then um, i call him and he says oh what company are you oh Huawei. oh i don't remember what kind of vacancy was and uh, frankly speaking it's uh, when I hear uh, such kind of uh, answers, I don't want to communicate anymore. If you want to work at a special company, if you send CV there, you must remember <laughs> and uh, be ready to answer the call. Yeah, and uh, to say, why do you want to work at this company? And then you will have all the chances to go to. Because the first step at each co company, it's recruiter. So to come to interview first time, you must be ready for answers. Why exactly do you want to work in this company? Not in general yeah. in CV, but in this company. In this company and why this project is interesting and especially uh, why uh, should we choose you? I understand that maybe it's a difficult question, but you should 
it's easy to uh, answer first frankly speaking you should uh, examine uh, the vacancy and find the skills which you have and say i'm qualified enough for this vacancy and be very <laughs> comfortable with, with it i want to work with it and i am ready to have some kind of test to prove it that's all okay that was my question thank you thank you uh dear applicants dear visitors of our webinar if you have any questions please don't hesitate to write uh -huh. in, in chat form and also i see there is one more question I yeah please we... mm -hmm. i sent my uh email uh, is it seen to everybody or not yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. in chat form there is one more question from chang tai chen please uh -huh. read it. could you read please uh-huh yeah. um, i started to do right to me by email I sent. Uh, I am from India. I'm interested in doing higher studies abroad, but with scholarships. How should I go about it? Also, I present, I want to take up research project internship in the field of AI medicine. Now, this question, I think for me, this question for okay. me. <laughs> well, I'll yeah, answer. There is a question in, yeah, in the question and answer form. You can uh -huh. see it in Zoom also. Yes, not in chat, but in question answer forum. There's one question from Chang Tai Chen, probably. I'm not sure in pronunciation. Uh -huh. the name. Could you read it? Because it's new for me and they can't find it. Um, really. I copy uh -huh. it to the common chat. Uh -huh. I copy it in the common chat. Find, please. It starts from, excuse me, I was a software engineer in traditional manufacturing. Yeah, yeah, I see. Oh, it depends on the company. I don't know the rules in your company. And I suppose that usually in each company, we have some kind of demands to the each position. And that's why if you want to change something in your professional field, you should see the demands and uh, make your career plan and follow it. Mm, maybe, sure, if you want again write to me please uh, tell the name of the company and uh, maybe i can help you but usually it's a good idea to go to hr specialist maybe career advisor in your company and uh, he will help you or, or she will help you mm -hmm. anything else to me uh, probably I have some question, <laughs> actually. Please. So mm -hmm. um, uh, probably you know that our Master of Computer Vision degree is uh, a distributed degree. It's online, completely online degree of uh, Coursera platform. So I'm interested in how uh, do you deal with uh, some distributed, uh, s someone uh, abroad, uh, someone who is not from Nizhny Novgorod, but who wants to, um, uh, to work at Huawei, for example. So do you have some... Uh, positions for distributed um, engineers or, I don't know, uh, uh, engineers outside of your uh, campus, your office? Uh, unfortunately, uh, right now we don't have uh, the opportunity to uh, work with people who don't want to move to Nizhny Novgorod. We are ready to pay them for relocation. We are ready to help them to relocate if the company is interested in it. But uh, if you want to work to, uh, with Huawei or for Huawei, you have a great opportunity because Huawei has a great number of offices all around the world and it's quite easy to find uh, a good position just in every country. Uh, now we have more than 200 employees all around the world and um, I don't think that it's very difficult to become one of them, a newcomer. Please look uh, all the vacancies and uh, I suppose it's quite easy really. Oh, thank you, Andre. There is one more question for you in chat and uh, in questions form, actually, from Abbas Jorawala. I'm sorry if I make mistake in foreign names. Could you please answer? Yeah, actually, um, I, I, 
as I tried to answer uh, it, uh, a bit this question before, but probably I misunderstood something because um, actually I I'm not sure that we have the same uh, project. So uh, there are some projects. I mean, when for example, when I said that we have several projects with Huawei at uh, HSC University, then it's a um, rather large project uh, with uh, I don't know six months duration and uh, uh, something like. Uh, eight participants, uh, so with some um, well-qualified participants and something like this. But uh, so it's the first one of the project. And uh, for example, when the recruiter tell, told you that uh, you should uh, prove that you are a good candidate for some particular project in um, their company, then again, they say that, okay, there is a project, for example, uh, which we told before, of gesture recognition. So, and you should... Uh, how do you? How, what what are what are your qualities uh, in work on such project of gesture recognition? Do you know how? Do you know some practical uh, libraries, some algorithms for this task or not? But if you speak, the project is some not um, rather large. I mean, project like I told before, and project is some uh, tasks to start with. Then uh, there, so it's not a project. I mean, uh, uh, research project or I don't know uh, some development project. But it's a pro, not not a pro. It's some starting point, some starting tasks to start. Then uh, one of my previous answers was you can try to uh, start with image recognition tasks like uh, digital recognition or I don't know some fine tuning of neural networks. You can get acquainted with. Uh, some libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow and uh, try to start some, to run some ex the examples in uh, image recognition and object detection, I don't know, in something which uh, you believe uh, you, you can do it. And I, I recommend, I strongly recommend to start with image recognition. But uh, again, so the meaning of the project is rather different. So if I'm not answering your question right now, you can qualify it, clarify it in uh, Mm -hmm. I had a question uh, from one of our um, participants. Yeah, uh, right now we have, I have a, at work a very important uh, position. It's connected with LIDAR and RADAR. Uh, it is closely connected to computer vision, but it's another, it's more uh, in physics. So if anybody is interested, because it was some kind of question about it. And uh, as for the best place for computer vision labs, surely it's Nizhny Novgorod. Welcome to <laughs> study with us and to work with Huawei and study with uh, HSC. -E. Yeah, and it would be good, I suppose. Okay. So as far as I can see, there is no more question actually. Mm -hmm. So we can move forward, yes, Andrei? Yeah, uh, so thanks, uh, thanks. Every, our participants and I kindly ask you to stay with us because probably we will have some other questions to you and uh, we can, yeah, we can continue, but probably it's better to, uh, yeah, to, uh, yeah, yeah, something like this. So let's move to uh, the end of, of our presentation. Yep, uh, I believe we need to move slightly further yeah something like this so uh, uh yeah okay uh let's <laughs> let's start from this slide so let me continue our uh, introduction of this master of computer vision program so uh, as i told before we have a great amount of business partners and practically all courses except some uh some small introductory courses uh, are created with help and uh, with participation of some uh, engineers, research engineers, uh, specialists in computer vision from our partners. I mean, not from also from, on, or from uh, HEC University, but from our partners like Intel, Huawei, uh, Experience, Harman, and so on and so forth. So uh, again, we have some, for sure, we have some academic partners and uh, we have some uh, great um, uh, possibility and opportunity to start your research projects in uh, computer vision. So we have an international laboratory of uh, algorithms and technologists. Probably we will have some uh, international laboratory of computer vision. So we uh, the computer vision uh, area and field of computer vision actively 
is actively developed in uh, Nizhny Novgorod and HSC University also. So you can uh, choose either industrial track or um, research track or, and uh, try to do some research in computer vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you move to, yeah. Could you move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So um, uh, again, this is a master degree. So uh, uh, this is actually this is though this is an online master degree, but we have the same absolutely the same um, requirements for our um, uh, participants and for our future students as our uh, other uh, as our other offline degrees and we need the bachelor diploma and something related to uh, mathematics computer science technical science and something like this so we have some exams in uh, in mathematics and uh, programming and uh, after the graduate of uh, and finishing of this degree you will uh, receive the state approved diploma of hsc university so it's uh, absolutely the same diploma as for um, other master uh, master uh, degrees for offline master degrees of our uh, HEC university and it's uh, state approved and probably you can uh, ask uh, Alina for help and uh, we have some discussion in our telegram chat uh, which uh, showed you the examples of such diploma and uh, it's uh, well recognized in uh, Russia and in Europe for example so uh, again we will have a set of uh, some problems solve problems for portfolio and most of our problems and during our courses again are created by specialists and engineer research engineers and computer vision from our industrial partners so they will uh, definitely ask you some uh, tasks and give you some examples which are really important for industrial applications so you can after graduating this and after getting this experience in this solving these problems in your portfolio you will uh, uh, you will help. Uh, I, I believe you can find a good job. And uh, again, we have there are plenty of opportunities for computer vision engineers. So for sure, we have some knowledge of uh, modern algorithms and technologies and the usage of uh, different programming uh, tools, programming libraries to create computer vision library. So speaking about the structure and content of, of the program, we have two years. And uh, all to each of two years is, div is uh, divided into two semesters. So in the first semester, it's a half of the first year, you have uh, four courses and uh, two courses in parallel. So it's, uh, again, one half of the year, I believe from September till, uh, till December or yeah, something like this. And you have two courses in parallel. And after that, you will move to other two courses. And uh, first of all, we have some adaptation courses uh, on. Uh, sorry, could you? Yeah, could you return back? Uh -huh, okay, thank you. Uh, so we have some adaptation courses for object-oriented programming in C++ and Python, um, because just to align your experience, uh, because we expect that we have uh, participants with different experience in programming, and also we have mathematics for computer vision, and it's again an adaptation course to align your knowledge of mathematics of uh, probability theory and so on and so forth which is uh, needed for computer vision after that we have some courses in 2d image processing uh, it's uh, one of the authors is myself and uh, uh, we have other authors who are uh, for example the active maintainers of OpenCV library and enough details to create uh, your first computer vision algorithms with traditional uh, approaches and also we have a data analysis and machine learning and one of those of this course is um, um, Maxim who uh, was uh, mentioned before he is an engineer at uh, research engineer at Huawei uh, specialist in, yeah, in you know, computer vision and data analysis and machine learning so uh, let's move to the next semester. I mean, uh, the uh, end part, uh, second part of the first year. So we have some uh, courses devoted to modern operations research, and it's a uh, uh, more or less theoretical course, and it's created by our laboratory of algorithms and technologies for network analysis. Also, we have a project from our partner, Experience AI. Uh, uh, it's a rather large individual project, which uh, need in which we will need something like six six weeks uh, to work in traditional computer vision and to apply. Uh, some algorithms of advanced machine learning to computer vision, to traditional computer vision. 
After that, you will have some courses for deep learning computer vision. It's created by our partners of around you company. And probably if you take a look at our previous webinars, we have some recordings from our partners of this company. So you can take a look at them also. And also we have a course on architecture of computing system because uh, in, we try to create, uh, we try to uh, teach not only data scientists, but also data engineers. So uh, everyone, a programmer and um, developer who will, can do not only the uh, not only the uh, some training of uh, deep learning models, but also try to integrate this into complete uh, uh, complete software, and uh, that's why you need some um, uh, advanced understanding of uh, computing systems. And after that, we have uh, this uh, the second uh, year. Yeah. Uh, so again, the first half of the second year will be devoted to three-dimensional image processing, so understanding of uh, three-dimensional world, because we, have, we know so that images are two-dimensional, but we need to understand uh, the three-dimensional world, and uh, there are some uh, so-called visual geometry. Also, we have a course for uh, several applied tasks of computer vision, so I mean, uh, it will be created by uh, different um, companies, and uh, it will cover some aspects like uh, computer vision in medicine, for example, and some like this, so some uh, practical examples of uh, application of computer vision in some industrial applications. And also we have some uh, course for modern tools uh, for solving computer vision problems, something like Open Vino uh, Toolkit and Framework, which is developed by Intel at Nizhny Novgorod. And also we have a project on deep learning and computer vision. So the first project, I mean, uh, the first uh task was for just uh, general applications of machine learning but here is again it's a rather large task from one of our industrial partners and it's uh, it will be devoted to using modern deep learning techniques in computer vision in a real practical tasks okay and uh so yeah and uh the last part here is uh, the fourth semester uh, the last part and uh, we will uh, introduce you deep generative models so how to generate uh, some images say in paintings like Prisma application or something like this, how to add some uh, style to your photographs. Uh, next, there, is a there will be a course uh, of uh, computer vision for mobile devices. I mean, uh, just how to run the uh, rather complex computer vision algorithms on mobile devices without uh, moving data, personal data, for example, to a remote server. So it's, uh, you need some uh, you definitely need some skills in, uh, in uh, creating these lightweight neural networks, for example, and using them on mobile devices because it's uh, one of the uh, cutting edges right now in uh, practical applications. And probably you can take a look at the uh, speech of Alexander during today's webinar, who mentioned some applications of patient detector and something, like, uh, something similar on mobile device. So it's actually a really important task and uh, there are some well-known uh, problems and we will discuss them in this course. Also, we have a course again of software engineering of computer vision project, how to create uh, the complete uh, computer vision product. You don't know, need only the, how to train the neural network model, but you need to know how to gather appropriate data set, how to deal with uh, limited uh, data set, I mean, limited number, amount of data, how to, uh, uh, how to uh, implement this project, how to uh, use it, and how to send this project to the customers, how to update this, uh, the code and the model, for example, in your project to customers. And uh, we have a final project, so, uh, so it's uh, something, uh, I mean, it's uh, more or less research project, individual product, uh, which, for which you need to uh, work on some task which will be interesting for you, for you but created by our uh, partners or uh, researchers from HEC University. And after that, you will, uh, after graduating this uh, final project, you will uh, obtain our diploma of Master of Computer Vision. So I believe, uh, Alina, you can continue uh, the work uh, because it's, uh, I mean, uh, the speech here because it's uh, more technical and uh, there are some oh, questions okay. for me okay. in chat. As we have already mentioned, this program runs for two years on Coursera platform. Uh, estimate time which students spend to 
to watch courses and do the task is about 20 or 30 hours per week, but it actually depends on the personal uh, knowledges and skills of every student. What about high level of support? Speaking about online studying, you may think that you stay alone with recorded courses and nobody help you, but actually that's absolutely not right this. Uh, we usually organize during each course, we organize free uh, online sessions with your group mates and tutor of the current course. Also, we have special system which is called Slack. Then you all uh, group mates, all students and um, teachers stay in contact like in messengers. It's like messenger, like WhatsApp, like uh, Telegram, but professional level of uh, messenger. And also every um, every tutor, every teacher has special hours. It's so-called contact hours. Then you can call him, um, discuss projects, ask questions and get feedback about your own questions and about your own position in this course attention to practical work as uh, we have already mentioned also this is not only theoretical program uh, according to this recorded lectures you will uh, execute a lot of projects applied projects for your future portfolio and for you and for your applied experience move next speaking about mm -hmm. speaking about tuition the full tuition is 1,320,000 rubles. We provide discount system, which is uh, depends on the um, citizenship of our students. So some countries have one number of discount, some another. To check what discount provides for your country, please visit our website or contact me and I will uh, answer you de more detailed. Uh, international applicants pay the tuition fee in US dollars and it the price depends on the current course. Move next. Mm -hmm. A very interesting information, let me say, for our applicants. I'd like to pay your attention that admission campaign for the fall cohort is finishing actually and the deadline to submit application is August 10 for foreigns and August 12 for Russian applicants. You need to, to apply to this program, you need to sign in his CE system and create here your personal account. Actually, it is quite simple process and you just need uh, three documents, your passport, diploma and transcript. You fill the form, apply these documents and this is enough to apply for our program. Entrance exam and as well as registration is uh, free. The next, oh, wait a second. The next step is entrance exam. It will take place on August 19 in online format. To make it comfortable for people from different time zones, we provide uh, two time slots, 10 a.m. in the morning and 7 p.m. in the evening. You may choose the most appropriate time zone after you apply, you, after you submit your application personal account. So first one, you uh, submit your application, upload passport, diploma, transcripts. After I'll contact you and we decide what time is more comfortable comfortable for you and two days before exam you will get link with individual access to exam system. You will have 120 minutes to do four tasks. Also then you um, submit your application. I'll send you all examples of exam uh, of exam paper with solutions and without solutions for self preparation. So uh, I actually I think most of you have already familiar with these exam samples. And the next date is uh, 28 August. This date, uh, this deadline for submission of all supporting documents and signing all agreements. That means that you pass in trans exam, successfully pass in trans exam. After you upload some uh, additional documents in your personal account, and by 28 August, we need to sign all documents and uh, you need to execute first payment for um, your study. We start our study from the 1st September. Next slide, what is this? Mm. Uh, all actual information I publish on our website, please visit it also for information about tuition fee, also about exam papers, recommended literature and others. Announcement of the following events. Yes, as I have already said, uh, on, on August 12th, we will organize a webinar how to prepare for the entrance exam. Uh, at this webinar, we will um, discuss how to do the third variant of exam sample paper. On our website today, you may find 
two variants with solutions and one variant without it. So you may practice three times to do this task. And on this webinar, we will explain the third uh, exam paper, how to do it. On August 7, 17, we will organize uh, via Zoom like this conference pre-exam consultation. Link I also share with you in advance. And on August 19, entrance exam. Yeah, I think that's all. That's that's uh, that's all what I wanted to say to you. And now it's time for questions. Maybe there are some questions. What skills are evaluated in the entrance exam? Uh, to pass successful entrance exam, you need to have uh, basis, basic knowledges in programming part and in mathematics. Mathematic part is, uh, I think maybe Andrei, could you consult what exact knowledges in mathematics are necessary to pass entrance exam? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can, I can probably do so. Um, um, we need some basic knowledge of probability theory and uh, mathematical statistics, something like uh, speaking about uh, some distribution, joint distribution, uh, computing the mathematical expectation, variances of probability distribution, something like this. Uh, we also need uh, something related to optimization parts. So we have some questions regarding uh, some optimization tasks like um, or solving the uh, the, some uh, some equations or linear square method or something like this. So again, uh, I believe yeah this one. And also we have some basic uh, no uh, basic uh, questions about uh, I don't know solving the equations or inequations with some parameters. So how does the equation, the, the solution of some equation depend on the parameters or something like this. So we have some examples and uh, I strongly recommend you to follow our examples and our previous webinars examples of our questions because uh, I believe you will find. So we don't ask something much more difficult when compared to our examples of our questions and our discussions of uh, on, from our previous webinars. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, there is question uh, um, about payment. How is the tuition payment done? Actually, we divide pay we divide the full sum into three payments. Uh, first one before. 1st September in this year, second one before 15 January uh, 2022, and the last one before 15 1st September. 15 September. 15, yeah, yeah, 15 September 2022. 2022. Yeah, free payments. First payment is obligatory. We can change it or move before or later. But the second and third, we can divide into more payments according to the how, how it is more comfortable for students. We should discuss it via email after uh, registration in personal system. Uh, maybe other questions? Maybe somebody want to raise up hand and ask by voice? Yeah, just raise your hand and I will let you speak by voice. Anybody? Uh -huh. We have one hand. One second. Chang Tai Chen, you're online and you can speak. Okay, hello. Okay, clear. Hello. You ready for me? Yeah, hello. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I'm interested about that online course. Excuse me, um, I'm Taiwanese, so my accent may be different. So if I have an opportunity to go to the university's uh, research room for real interactive discussion and research within this uh, two years online master's program, uh, is my question. Uh, actually, this program runs uh, completely online. So all interactions with your teachers and group mates are organized in online format. But if you are presented in Nizhny Novgorod, if you if you are here, you're always welcome to visit our campus and to face 
to face in reality our academic supervisors to discuss with them that was your question or no? oh oh yeah yes my question yes uh, okay I, I i understand thank you thank you mm, so good. if you are in Nizhny novgorod you are always welcome to come to use our auditories or classrooms to speak with our professors in reality oh, okay okay all right all right i understand all right thank you uh -huh. thank you uh sorry sorry excuse me excuse me here is another question yeah welcome Uh, Andre, there is interesting question in question form from David Gladson. I think it's very professional question. Good uh, uh, okay, okay. I uh, see it's okay. Does see the age issue if uh, to study this course. Oh, I, very, I, I sorry, we can hear you. Could you uh, could you repeat your question, please? Uh, does see the okay the uh, there is the age issue. So uh, maybe the student maybe. Uh, the young men such as uh, 20 to 30 is uh, louder. But as for the, the age uh, over 35 age, maybe um, consider about again, or such as that. It's my question. I want to ask you to repeat your question once again, because I don't understand. Uh, probably, what... I can, probably I can oh, answer you... it because, oh. uh, yeah, I, I have uh, some, uh, yeah, some experiences uh, understanding, but probably I'm not correct, but in, in this case, uh, you can repeat your question, but are uh, there any uh, restrictions for age uh, in our program so you can uh, participate in it if you are, uh, I don't know, 20 years old or 60 years old, and uh, uh, if you are interested in new knowledge, so, and uh, that's why actually Coursera platform was uh, created, so it's not for only for young uh, students, but also with someone who uh, has, uh, yeah, who wants to learn something new. But uh, the mm. only one, uh, again, limitation here is that we require a bachelor diploma, and uh, we so we definitely need it because again, we uh, our master degree has an official master degree at the HSC University, and uh, according to our. Uh, rules we need a bachelor's degree so if you have a bachelor's degree don't matter what is your age okay all right all right thank you thank you i understand thank you okay andre okay. for your question for, from david gladson in chat form yeah yeah, yeah. thanks uh, i'm taking a look at it uh, Uh, so it's actually, I'm not sure that I can answer what is the grade between one and 10. Yeah. Uh, so how to understand it and speaking about black box. So, um, I have two probably answers for this question about, uh, about this black box and uh, some results. So, uh, the first one, um, actually you say that, uh, uh, something you are interested only in getting some result. I mean, to obtain some very accurate model of, uh, I don't know, face recognition, for example. Yep. So you are interested only in the, in creating the model, which uh, is, uh, which has 99% uh, accuracy and probably you, you need some uh, latency, some speed or something like this. So uh, in this case, you can think about the, that the model is a black box. But if you need to develop this model, uh, so you definitely need uh, to know how the different models, uh, what are the differences of different models. So if, for example, if you want to, uh, if you want uh, to create a fast model uh, suitable for mobile devices, you uh, need some knowledge of what are the fast neural networks, which uh, fast architectures of neural networks, which will help you to create um, uh, rather accurate and very fast solutions. So even, uh, so if you are a user of such models, okay, you say, okay, some, someone develops it for me and I will use it and uh, it will be uh, absolutely a black box. 
uh, it's possible, but if you are a developer of such models, you will definitely need some knowledge of uh, different architectures. And that's why uh, several of our courses, and for example, in deep learning or computer vision, will give you a good um, starting point to understand the differences in neural networks architectures. So it's the first part. And the second part, uh, there is some uh, theoretical research uh, papers which try to answer uh, uh, actually, the uh, titles of this page, uh, page paper say something like opening the black box of neural networks. So they try to understand what is inside the uh, neural networks. I mean, what is inside the algorithms for training neural networks? Why are they so successful, even if rather simple um, optimization methods are used? And uh, there are some applications of information theory for uh, this particular task. So how to understand why, for example, stochastic gradient descent method uh, actually works uh, for to create a really good um, architecture, really good neural network. And um, it's more theoretical. Um, actually, it's more theoretical questions. But uh, I should say that several um, of my offline students during their coursework Coursework, so something like projects in our uh, schedule of our master degree, they work on similar tasks uh, during their own research projects uh, in our university in offline program. And probably, if uh, someone is interested to such to answering such uh, research questions about opening the black box of neural networks, they will be they could uh, participate and, uh, for example, in their final project and try to uh, to make their own research and try to uh, obtain their own answer. OK, thank you. Uh, so there are two more questions I see my answer. There is a question from Virab Gever Gevergan. I'm so sorry if I make mistake in your name once again. So does the bachelor, a bachelor's degree in physics convenient? Yes, we accept. Uh, any bachelor's degree actually just to apply to any master program in his university you need to have any kind of bachelor's degree but to apply to our program successfully you need to have it and mathematics background so bachelor's degree in physics is okay mm -hmm. uh GS, yes. uh you're online and you can ask your question Saga, you're online. Oh, yes, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you well. Yeah, uh, I also posted my question, but uh, I'll, I'll repeat it here also. So I wanted to ask, like, uh, what kind of association we will have with the HSC University? So uh, will it be like a normal uh, offline student, or uh, it will be a, a separate? Uh, we will be treated as separately. So that is the question. And uh, I also wanted to know, like, uh, if we want to visit the laboratories and the library uh, physically, can we do that? And uh, also, I wanted to know, like, uh, do we get a student ID card or something? So uh, these are my questions. Uh, I also posted it on the chat, if I'm not audible. Uh, was that audible? Uh -huh. Yeah, I understood your question. Actually, all our students, uh, I remind once again that this program officially has absolutely the same status as any other on campus master program in his university. That means mm -hmm. that students of this uh, program have absolutely the same rights, opportunities, and access to any resources of his university. Just mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, online format in some cases limit this uh, disabilities but you can access to any online resources to any online centers libraries um, for everything you, you get you have access for everything actually even if you come in russia in Nizhny Novgorod, your opportunities will rise and you may come here in our campus and do and use everything so oh, the okay. same rights for all students on campus and online Mm -hmm. Okay, and if we if we want if we wish to uh, spend uh, some weeks uh, in, uh, in HSC University uh, during this two year course, can we do that? Why not? But I think that due to coronavirus, it will be 
quite difficult, but officially yeah, you, you may. Okay, I understood. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Panzeran, you're next. Feel free to yes, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I'll hear you. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you for having me. So basically, I just want to ask, um, uh, like the type of assessment normally in the courses that uh, comprehend uh, the whole program. So uh, the assessments are going to be mostly like uh, projects uh, or practical assignments or labs, or rather there is going to be like a, a big percentage of the assessment is going to be like a final exam or uh, something like that. So I just want to have an idea because when you mentioned the, the, the amount of hours that you have to spend in a week, like 20, 30, is this like uh, doing the assignments and, and the projects and things like that, or, or, or maybe just preparing for exams uh, theoretically? And that's, that's basically my question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I understood your question. First part, I can I can answer. The second, I need help from Andrei Savchenko, actually. So speaking about assessment, do you, then you then you are watching the recorded lectures on Coursera platform. All tasks are. Um, uh, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Yes. Oh, because I have doubled sound in my headphones. Sorry. So oh, all, oh, maybe uh, I ha I have to mute my one now. Okay, sorry. I, yeah, I'm gonna you. unmute. That. Yeah, sure. So you watch lectures and you do practical tasks in the quiz form, which are assessment autom automatically by Coursera platform. Also, you get during each course, you execute one project, one applied project, and you do this project through the course. Each course lasts six weeks. So, for example, uh, um, yeah, you watch recorded lectures, do practical tasks with automatically assessment by Coursera and execute ex execute applied project, which is controlled by the current tutor at the end of this course. Usually and officially each course finished by exam. And this exam in some courses is presented by the applied project, which you executed during these six weeks. Am I right, Andrei Savchenko? Could you please comment this? How, uh, how do we assess the each course? by exam or by projects which a student execute during the co this course? Uh, okay, so actually it depends on the uh, main instructors of this course. So instructor uh, take care about uh, the preferred way to assess the course, but in general, we don't have uh, some something. So we, we don't have the word exam or something like final exam. So first of all, we use some assessment strategies from Coursera. So after each week, yeah, uh, as Alina told, we have some quizzes, some uh, grades, uh, some uh, tasks. Uh, as in general, Coursera, uh, in general Coursera, in general course at Coursera platform. Yep. And the, but what is the difference of uh, online degree when compared to general course from Coursera? First of all, you have a possibility to communicate with your instructors. Uh, during the webinars, for example, be uh, bi-weekly webinars in ordinary courses and weekly webinars in um, in um, project courses. It's first communication, and also you should have at least one um, task which is uh, which is not automatically assessed. So it will be assessed by a tutor, by some instructor. Uh, who is uh, who communicates with you during his webinars? So you can take a look at this like an exam, but actually it's some practical. It's usually some practical task in which you need to uh, do something. In some cases, it's uh, called a project, so you need to create a presentation of your solution, and after that you will be assessed the final task. So the in generally speaking, in HSC University, we the final score is some average of your course during your work on each week and uh, the final score i mean from exam not an exam right now but from some uh, final task which is assessed by an instructor uh, excellent thank you and i have uh, one more question if i may mm -hmm. uh, so basically um 
when you mention um, the projects, for example, or the webinar, sorry, uh, is this uh, something like it's going to be on a regular schedule, like every week we need to allocate some time, maybe Moscow, uh, Moscow time or Russian time to participate in these lectures or in these webinars, or like how frequent these uh, live sessions or webinars are going to be. And second of all, uh, also if we are expected to have some of these projects uh, to be done uh, in, in groups as well and to, to collaborate with other students as well. Uh, I'm just asking basically just to, to see how I will be able to manage my time because I, I work full time. And so it, 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 so how, how, how difficult it will be or not. And that's, that's basically my, why I'm, I am asking this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I got your question and my answer. Uh, so as I have already mentioned, each course lasts six weeks. Three times during each course, we organize online meetings in two time, time slots for people who live in different time zones in the morning, uh, according to Moscow time, in the morning and in the evening. So it can help us to make it comfortable for people who live in different time zones to choose the most appropriate for them. For example, this week, the meeting will be on Friday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Please book what time do you want to attend? Also, all webinars will be recorded, of course. And if you, in any case, Per personal cases you can't, couldn't visit it, uh, you may watch it in recording and also you may ask questions in Slack platform. So you may uh, <laughs> like this, watch the recorded lecture webinar, understood what was happened during this webinar and write to your group mates. So guys, I missed, but I have some questions. Let's discuss something like this. Also, as um, Andre said, during the project courses, the meetings will be organized uh, every week as far as I understood yeah every week and there are also I think will be two time slots in the morning and in the evening yeah precisely uh, and what and your question was also about project um, is it executed by students themselves on alone or in group generally all projects executed by the student himself but uh, you may improve your connections with your group mates and decide to do it together or to share your ideas and help each other or create new project in your own group. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Mm -hmm. Much warmer. You're online. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Um, I had a question about uh, recommendations for specific institutions that is especially accessible or appreciated for the PhD that is required for acceptance for this course. Would uh, Coursera also offer that? Uh, are you asking about, are you asking about uh, recommendation after, during the study and after studying for other companies and other places? No, I'm asking if uh, you have any recommendations for a specific school to earn the degree from to get acceptance into this program. Would Coursera offer that also? Concerning computer vision field? Mm -hmm. uh, at this moment, I'm not ready to answer this question. I have I haven't ever think about this. But if you share your email, probably in my private chat, I'll consult with other staff and academic leaders, and me probably will send you some useful links, some useful places, resources, universities, and courses. Okay, thank you. Share, please, your email. Uh -huh. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, let's check the chat. Let me check also. Uh, actually, I, I've read, but I don't remember who, <laughs> who was the author of that question and how is it exactly sound but it was like something like um, do we help students to find job after getting degree something like this 
what can I say about this, that all our students uh, have uh, access to the, it's so-called secret, I don't know, secret um, platform in which our partners, partners not of only of our company, like Intel, Mera, Huawei, it's CZ, et etc., but also partners of the whole HCU University, publish their closed vacancies for our students. Uh, and uh, our students get access to this uh, to this base, to this set of vacancies. Also, we help, we have career center who help, which help you to build a perfect um, resume and to make, and our academic supervisors make write you for your recommendation letters for every company which you want to apply. And moreover, you will stay in close contact with uh, representatives from different IT companies during the studies. And you may present your, yourself and apply for them and ask them to uh, ask them to consider your to consider your resume. Uh -huh. And we've got a question from uh, Chang Tai Chen. Mm -hmm. What question is? Q and A form. Q and I. Oh, there, are, there are a lot of questions. <laughs> Wait, which one? Last one? The last one. The last one. The last one is from Sagar GS. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Excuse me. Education system. Your yes, student master program opportunity into the company. Set so plus research. Uh, I think sure. Yeah, why why not? During your study, you do you will do thesis work. You will do applied projects. You may start your own research work, and you will stay in close contact with IT companies. And we can recommend you to become intern in the company. You, you we also consider the opportunity. Uh, actually, now we negotiate this opportunity with our partners that the most brilliant, the most successful students can become the intern to the into in the company. That's exactly possible. That was answer for Chang Tai Chen. I think probably it's from China. So anyway, we have official email. It is called mcv uh, at hisi.ru. You may ask any questions here. I also we also have. Um, messengers whatsapp and telegram messengers where i stay in contact with you almost 24 <laughs> 7 hours so you're welcome to ask questions and i remind once again that admission campaign is finishing and deadline is august 10 to re to register in his system registration is free you may register you may pass in trans exam and after decide will you apply for this program will you want you to be enrolled or not just to, at this step you need to register first before the registration is closed for everybody the deadline the deadline is 10 august and 12 august I think maybe that's all. Uh, Andre Savchenko is typing the answer for the last question for the last question in question form, and I think we we may check the chat for our email. And if you have any other question, please please contact us. Yeah, write to me. I will al always answer you. Uh huh. See all the courses. Uh, Thank yeah, you. I probably answered it. Mm -hmm. answered. Thank you, everybody. For oh, wait one second. I'll... Ah, you have already sent. Everything is okay. It's okay. Yeah. So goodbye. And as usual, we will upload the recording of this webinar on our website. And you may once again listen maybe answers and check important information or watch the presentation of our partner about amazing opportunities like doing <laughs> the heart with your hands. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah, you. thanks everyone. Bye-bye.
Thank you for being with us. Goodbye.